How's it going, everybody? Today, we are going to be talking about Google Keyword Planner and how to use it, everything you need to know. Uh, this is a tool that is specifically for PPC paid campaigns, Google paid campaigns, but um, also I do recommend it for anybody for organic search or any kind of research that you're doing. It's a free tool that you can get access to. I'm going to show you exactly how to access it if you don't have an account. So we are here at ads.google.com backslash home. Uh, just Google Google ads and you'll get to the screen. Um, we're going to hit start now. And for you, because I have access to multiple different ads accounts, um, you, I, I see something like this. You may see something slightly different, but I'm going to hit here, add new Google ads account. Just click whatever button you see to add a new Google ads account. Now, this part right here, it often trips people up on how to get access to the keyword planner. What you need to do is actually I'm gonna hide this. Um, it tries to get you into this flow for like a smart setup. I never recommend going through this when you're setting up your Google Ads account. Just come down here to switch to expert mode. And this will be the fastest way that you can get access to the Google Keyword Planner. So, and then we are just going to hit uh, create an account without a campaign right there. And then we're going to submit and explore account. So now we are actually inside of Google Ads and we have access to all the tools inside of Google Ads. This is the quickest way that I just guide you through to get there. So what we're gonna do now is come over here to Tools and Settings. And we're gonna come over to Keyword Planner. <clears throat> now Keyword Planner has evolved a lot over the past um, couple of years and it's gotten better and better and I'm excited to be sharing everything with you. So the first thing when you come to this page is you see two options. So the first one is discover new keywords, and the other one is to get search uh, volume and forecasts. This is good if you um, wanted to, obviously exactly what it sounds like to get forecasts of keywords, but most of the time I am, ta I am inside of the discover new keywords. This is where I can find profitable keywords for my business, the best ones to bid on, the ones to maybe not bid on, and all sorts of different things like that. So we're gonna go right into discover new keywords. And for this, uh, oh, and then for here, you're going to get a couple of different options. So you can start with keywords or start with the website. Um, typically, I start just with the keywords, but oftentimes I will come back and add my website to see if there's maybe keywords that I missed or that I um, forgot to use. For this example, we're going to be only talking about the uh, keyword uh, to, to find keywords related to our business. So um, something that I am going to do as an example is just a tripod. So pretend that I'm selling tripod, camera tripods. There are lots out there, so this gives us a good idea on how to break down categories and do different things. So we're gonna hit tripod. Here, if you wanted to add um, multiple keywords, you could add a comma, and it will it will add, it'll, it'll allow you to add more of those keywords inside of there. So we could do tripod, or maybe we could say like um, iPhone tripod, if we wanted to narrow it down. And then just hit comma, enter. Oh, invalid characters enter sorry not comma enter enter and then um so it's going to find us keywords related to these so we're going to get results right here and now we are actually inside of keyword planner and this is where things get start to get interesting so you can see here is the keywords that we provided tripod and iphone tripod it gives you the monthly average searches so we're looking at 100 to uh, 10k to 100,000. it shows us the competition this is very important to know how much you might be paying for keywords and how hard it might be to rank for these. And then this is the most important data for me individually when I'm doing forecasts, especially as I'm meeting with people and telling them how much um, things might cost. So uh, we have the top of bid range low, which is 23 cents versus a high range, which is 58 cents. So this gives me an idea of how much these cost, these clicks are going to be costing me. Now say that for whatever reason, I'm a local shop and I'm only in um, maybe the Nevada area. What you can do is you come up, come up here to the locations or if you're a, a local service business or something where you only wanna see the data for that specific area, you can come over here and you can actually type in your location. So um, say that I'm only showing in um, Nevada. So we can target right here and then get rid of the United States. And what this will do is it will show, um, this data will change to only locations inside of Nevada. So as you can see, the numbers now are um, understandably a lot lower. Um, so that's one of the ways that you can change and you can do the same thing with location, uh, with language, sorry, location, and then your date range up here. So, but I'm gonna, for the purpose of this exercise, we're gonna go back just to the United States because it gives us more data and things to look at. So we're gonna go back to the United States at Target. 
save there. Um, the next thing is you'll notice that um, as soon as you type in your keywords, Google does give you a broadened search. So you can come through and add more keywords that Google thinks are related to your keyword. So um, this might be a good one. If I sell tripods, I probably also sell camera accessories. So I could add this inside of here and then hit get results. And now you'll notice the keyword shows up right here, right, right along the sides. And then I also have more keyword uh, suggestions to go through. Now, before you go through and look at all of these keyword ideas, it is a good idea to come over to this right-hand column. This is very helpful and to refine your keywords. So this will break it out by branded or non-branded. If you click, you'll see there's a ton of brands for tripods. Say that I only wanted to look at ones for, I know that Nikon is a really profitable um, brand for me. So now I only want to look at tripods that um, have the keyword Nikon in them. It'll, you'll notice on this left-hand side, now we only have brands for um, Nikon. So as you can see, these are all of, the only brand now that is showing up inside of here is Nikon. Those are the only brands that are showing up. Now, if I only wanted to see keywords that have the word Nikon in them, I could come over here to this filter. I could add a filter and I could say keyword contains Nikon. Um, now, when I filter out these, I'm going to get all the keywords that have Nikon inside of them. So this just filters it out to um, show any, any branded or non-branded keywords, if it includes Nikon or any of these different things. So you can come through here and you can do the same thing with retailers or with other brands, uh, very helpful. You can go by device category, uh, mobile phones or phones, uh, lots of different options inside of this refined keyword that I do recommend um, playing around with and getting familiar with. Those are just some of the, the, the common things that I use them for. Going back to this filter, there are lots of things that you can do inside of the filter. Um, some of the common ones that I just showed you is the, the, the actual keyword phrase or a certain term or brand that you want to bid on. The next is the competition is really good. If you only want to show for maybe low ki uh, competition keywords, you could click right here and say, okay, where are, the, where are some low competition keywords that I could be bidding on for my brand? Uh, another uh, useful filters, click in here. Um, those are the biggest ones that I use. You, organic impression share, if you wanted to show up for keywords that you organically show up for, uh, naturally that could be a good one to go for as well. But those are the main functions that I use for the filter. Now let's say that we did want to only go for um, Nikon. Right? Oops, sorry, I gotta go keywords here. We did only wanna show for um, uh, related search terms that are related to Nikon. We go through and we could click on some of these. And this is where the new tool gets powerful. So as I go through and I click, okay, I, I like these keywords. I like these ones. You can now, as you see these, this little blue bar appears right here, and you can add this to your plan or to an existing campaign. Most of the time, if you're watching this video, you're just creating a, uh, your first campaign. So we're going to add to a plan. We're going to have this a new ad group, and I can call this my Nikon uh, ad group. We're going to create that right there. With that for that to load. So now you'll notice our plan is in the Nikon and we could do broad match. We could add our, now we can add our keywords to our plan, either broad match, phrase match, or exact match. For this example, we're just gonna keep it at broad match and we're gonna add keywords. And what you're gonna notice is that I'm gonna do is over on this side in the account status, you're gonna notice it's gonna put it in your plan. In this account status, if it, you have a keyword inside of your campaign, it'll actually say in account, but you say it's in plan. And what we can do is we come over here to this plan overview and Google will give you an idea of how much uh, how, how much traffic these keywords will generate you, how much it will cost, and your average conversion or your average uh, click through rate and different things like that. So as you can see here, it, uh, based on my plan, I can get around 500 clicks, 31,000 impressions. It will cost me about $1,000 a day or my daily budget will be $48. $48. This is really helpful if you are meeting with clients and they're wondering what my daily budget should be or how much I should be spending. This is a great tool to come to and to analyze those kind of questions. And then same with click-through rate, average CPC and position. And it even breaks it down by the specific keywords, how many clicks you'll get. So you'll notice this Nikon lenses is going to be, it looks like almost 80% um, of my traffic right here, just from this one keyword. So if I wanted to spend less, maybe I could look at getting rid of this keyword specifically. And then it'll also break it down by device and location. So uh, some things that you can you can uh, kind of count on in, in those different areas. So uh, you can also add different metrics here. So say I wanted to um, add my conversion rate. So my site conversion rate, let's say average is 3%. I could add this right here and hit save. And it will give me some more metrics based on that. So based on a 3% conversion rate, I can get 15 conversions at a CPA of $70. Now, this is helpful because I know if my tripods are selling for maybe $150 and my cost 
is say fifty dollars. That means I could my margin is about hundred dollars, and if I cost if I spend seventy dollars for an acquisition, that means I get thirty dollars of profit. So this is where you can start breaking down and answering those questions on whether Google will be profitable for your business as you play with the conversion rate and the CPA and different things like that. So this is a very powerful tool, and it's gotten better actually in the past couple of weeks uh, just on how this is calculated. I'm really happy with how how this tool is progressing. Now, so we've covered the keyword ideas tab. We've covered the plan overview. I do want to show you the grouped ideas. This is um, exactly what it sounds like is it will group all of your keywords into different ideas. This is good if you're building out multiple ad groups. So if I wanted to build an ad group based on Nikon lenses, I could do this here and it has these nine keywords that are related to, uh, to Nikon uh, lenses. And if I wanted to do an ad group for Nikon D5 600, same thing. Um, and you notice the same, uh, it shows me if I still, if I currently have that keyword in my plan. And if I wanted to add those to my plan, I could do the same thing right here. And if I wanted to add these to um, this Nikon D, D, uh, D, D5 600, you'll notice that it's, it's adding a new ad group there. So I can keep those plans separate and get a forecast for each of those plans. So very helpful in that regard. So I definitely recommend going and checking these out for different ways to organize your campaigns. This is one of the tool, first tools that I go to when I'm trying to figure out how to organize my campaign, my ad groups. And last thing here is the just the ad groups tab. Um, same kind of thing. If you add multiple ad groups in here, so say if I went back to the group keywords and uh, I decided to do this Nikon uh, uh, 5600 and then add those keywords right there. You'll notice if I come over to my ad group, it will have all the different ad groups that I've created. So I have the Nikon one that I created first and the Nikon D5600 right there. And you, you can get a breakdown of how many clicks each ad group will get, the cost, the, the average CPC and things like that to compare maybe this ad group versus the other ad group. And then the last thing here is this locations, oh, sorry, the keywords tab. Um, same thing as the keyword ideas. Um, this will break it down by the keywords specifically for your plan. And then same with location, just giving you a more of a narrative. Now, one other thing that um, a lot of people don't realize you can use Keyword Planner for is for also negative keywords. So if I come over here to keywords and I go negative keywords, um, I don't have any negative keywords in the plan, but what I can do is I can go and add those inside of here. So, so this is where you can add those negative keywords if you wanted to go and um, get ahead of the negative keyword. And then you can also add historical metrics just right here. So you can see the historical metrics for each of the keywords that you have inside of your plan. Right through here. And then the last thing is, uh, if you wanted to export your keyword ideas, um, this is typically what I do. Once I have them inside the plan, I actually will uh, come over to the plan overview and I will download these, this keyword list. So right here, as you can see, there's a little download thing. And I usually just put it right into a Google Sheet so that I have uh, all those keywords in one place and can have more control on uh, the data inside of there. So I'll just go through and, and export those, that Google sheets right there. So that, that was the main functionalities that I use for the Google keyword planner. Hopefully this video was helpful for you and giving you kind of an overview on what to expect inside of the tool. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you want some more content like this and we will see you in the next video.